where is our person? It's just a black shirt and then a, a blue wall. So he's just gone. And his hair, nothing here is giving us any detail. The Obsessive DP. Welcome back to The Obsessive DP. I'm Ryan. This is the show where we learn high-end industry-grade cinema etc. It's just a wealth of knowledge here for you for free. You name another place on the internet that is this free and this extensive. You can't find it. <sighs> Today we're gonna go talk about the five biggest lighting mistakes every DP makes. I've made all of these. I'm sure any DP that's ever started had to start somewhere, right? So you gotta make mistakes when you're starting somewhere. Because a lot of times when you start out, you just use the light that's available. Hopefully there's a nice big window with sunlight just flying through or even bouncing off a white source and then flying through. That's when you get the most beautiful visuals. There's definitely been a few times in my career where we just got lucky. I remember we were shooting specifically in an apartment for warrior training. There's massive windows, huge windows. And I remember the light just pounding a building right outside this window. Super bright, huge source, and it just, just came right through those windows right into our scene we didn't have to do anything about it we didn't have to light it it just already looked good and then we did some accent lights here and there sometimes you get lucky but you need to know when you're getting lucky and when you aren't and the best place to start that is actually in a studio one of the biggest mistakes you've made and I've done this so many times it's over exposing the image so let's go through a few images here all right guys so there's a few interviews here that are definitely overexposed let's pull up false color the best way to see if you're overexposed in a post scenario you can't meter it with a light meter after you filmed it but what you can do is load it into a false color plugin which I have here for premiere guys a lot of times I'm not explaining certain terms because uh, I know the things you can just look up you can google them if you're a student and you really want to learn this stuff you can google it or you can ask me and I can do a dedicated video but in very quick terms IRE values there are steps of exposure between 1 and 100 usually you want to light your skin tone at about 65 IRE these rules like 65 IRE at skin tone they can always be broken based on your story if there's a narrative where you want someone's literally in front of like a fire they could be like 75 IRE it's natural for that fire to be affecting the image. If they're indoors, for instance, candle lit, you're probably gonna be at like 20 IRE. And that's just what you have to know as a DP, what scenario you're gonna light the skin tone at what exposure, because it's gonna be changing based on every scenario. But a basic interview setup is 65 IRE. There's a lot of different coloring to color the steps of exposure that you can use with any false color app. I use the Flanders. It looks like this. So this gray area is actually the 55 to 65 IRE value skin tone that we want to nail. So it's actually being nailed right here, but I know there's an interview here that's really bright. I just got to find it. Yep, see how it's green here? That is actually means it's up in this higher green range. So this is our IRE, zero to 100. 55 to 65 is right here, the gray. This, just grab your exposure and change it. And let's see if it turns all gray on his cheek. We want it all gray on his cheek right there that's actually perfect exposure let's look now turn it off boom so that's actually better than what we actually edited it and filmed it as which is this so that is perfect that's too bright perfect too bright perfect now again if you wanted to if you wanted to shine more light on this gentleman if he was the, mo the most important part of this spot maybe you'd want him a little brighter than the rest but still he's technically a little overexposed let's do another one this here so this was kind of a crazy choice that we did this a while ago so i'll excuse ourselves a little bit but this is way overexposed i mean look at his face so actually the side to us his downside is actually perfect but it goes quickly into the red which you never want a skin tone i'm assuming 95% of the time, you're never gonna want a skin tone in the red of the IRE, because that's super hot. That's basically like your head is in a fire. That's how hot that is. So obviously we're working with a window here. The window's completely blown out. Should have put ND back there. We'll talk about that later. Let's do one more. This one here was actually an interesting one. We filmed this interview a long time ago. Here's an interesting problem. 
with the RED cameras. So the RED cameras, they say you can film any exposure if you're at 800 or if you're at 250 and you can change it, you can swap. It was like, if you filmed it at 250 and changed it in post to 800 ISO, it's like you filmed it at 800 ISO. Don't really know how it works, but that's what they say. But it breaks down a bit because we filmed this at 250 and it was extremely bright. So it was probably two to three stops overexposed. It was probably like this. That's how we filmed it at 250 ISO. So when you bring it down to like 50 ISO, that's actually off the chart. And clearly we lost some quality in the image. So if you look at the raw footage of this, you can see what I'm talking about. It was filmed at 250. I'm assuming that's outside of the range, Red would call it. So going down to 50 ISO, you actually do lose an image. I don't have confirmation on that. That's just what it looks like from what I've noticed. So for number two, we're talking about mixed lighting. This has been a struggle of mine. When I was more of a budding DP, I remember trying to keep house lights on, overhead lights on, let's say in a classroom, for instance. We just didn't have enough lights to fill in that big of a space. If you're doing a wide shot of a classroom, you turn off all the lights, you have to crank that ISO and it's not gonna look good. But I promise you, even if you just had like two lights, two low powered LEDs, it would look better than having those house lights on and mixing them with daylight. Here's an example. So this is a good spot. If you wanna check it out later, go for it. I feel like most of these are high quality visuals, really happy with how it turned out. Obviously a beautiful building, downtown Los Angeles. We're going inside now. All right, something just feels off about this shot. He has kind of this strange yellowness to him. There's blue obviously outside, although I, I'm sure we fixed it a lot. There's like a green, there's yellow. It just seems like a lot of different colors. Like look at the color in this room versus the color out here. I believe this is just daylight coming through a window. This is more of a yellow. Obviously you've got these cans, they're on. Don't have the cans on, just turn them off. <laughs> Something felt off about this frame versus the rest of the spot. The rest of the spot feels really good, clean, tight. This one didn't look that good because we're dealing with different colors and we did clean this up. I'm sure this was more blue. Excuse me. Moving on. All right, this one here. This one was definitely more tough. All right, so we're inside, right? We're, we're filming a hotel. This isn't a massive budget. You know, we're not filming a movie in a hotel. We're filming the tour of the hotel. So we had all these house lights on. That's just the way it's gonna be because they wanna show the lights that they have in the hotel because it's about the hotel. But we turn here. Something looks different, doesn't it? Out here is actually completely desaturated because it was blue. And I mean blue. Like it looked very odd having just blue out here. I know the gray isn't ideal, but I promise you it was better than just the straight blue. So that's what we had to deal with there when we're dealing with our mixed lighting. Here's the actual raw shot. Obviously we were just outside, it is blue. We clearly had to do a color shift in post because it looks like we're on a weird planet. And then we go inside and it looks, you know, nice because obviously the camera is at 3104, basically 3200 Kelvin. So that's what's a white light. And now we're moving over this window. There's the window now. It is blue out there feels wrong just feels like we did something wrong with the camera <laughs> but clearly here everything's uh colored correctly you know the white is white but the white out there is a totally different white cool white versus warm white totally different white points very clear here moving on lighting too evenly as a dp you want to light contrasty right look at this side of my face versus this side of my face it's totally different. Way more light hitting here versus here. Ooh, there's a little bit of red. It's boring to have even light. It's very boring. You know, a lot of times you'll light a product even, and that makes sense because it's a product, but lighting a face or lighting something that you want to look interesting evenly, it's not interesting. You want to see highlights. You want to see backlights. Look at that shimmer on my hand. Isn't that interesting? Here's an example here. We did a whole music video where we had, this was way under budget music video. I mean, their company did not make money on this this music video. I just want to say that out the outset. So we had a very small window to fit all of these. Look at all these actors that came in. All of these people had a little audition. So we had to give each of them time. And then obviously we had other moments with this, with the judges here. We had different moments with them. We were just cycling through these people. So what we did was we made a very simple setup. I mean, very simple setup. Look at how even she's lit. One of these, there's just a light mat shooting on her face evenly like this. 
stay down. It still looks good. It's not interesting, especially for this spot where we had a lot of interesting, creepy looking characters this way as well. When we shot the opposite way, it was still all lit evenly. What was nice about shooting this way is we had those windows. So they were actually edged really nicely. Look at the hair here all edged that's just that window that's not really us lighting but their faces could have been a little more interesting if we lit from one side or the other usually you want to light on the far side of the key so like i am here that was a video earlier in my dp career honestly the time constraint was a big thing i probably would have lit it differently if we weren't under that much of a constraint where we literally had no stands so we could just shoot wherever we wanted which was really nice but the even look was not great here's just a shot of someone at the front desk look at how even his face is not interesting at all here's what we totally missed here there's this light here in frame it's clearly in front of him there was a huge missed opportunity to naturally light him on this side because this is where our light is See, is you want to light from an organic source i would never want to light him on this side of his face there's no light over here i mean this one kind of not really this one's behind him there's no reason to light him on this side you'd want to light him on this side he should have a nice contrasty light on his face where this side's hotter and this side is more down it just makes sense and totally missed opportunity there uh if you guys have seen the commercial video you've you've seen this this is just completely even lighting this was a nationwide broadcast commercial it was a kids commercial so you know it was kind of par for the course as far as the lighting but for us we would never want to do something this even again we at least want to give you a light side and a downside and a little more contrast in your face it's just more interesting even if it's a kid's commercial we've done a ton of interviews in our career um i'm pretty sure all of these are extreme look at that one extremely even extremely even on the face this guy here too there's just I mean, there's like a little bit of a highlight here, but this is pretty much the same across. He just has some sheen. Boring, super boring. You can see where the light is. It's straight in front of him. You don't want a light straight in front of your subject unless you want super boring, bland, lit face. Kind of like what the news does. This is not how a cinematic production company should light ever. Moving on to number four, NDing windows. If you've seen our car interior video, you know what I'm talking about. But here's a good example of two scenes shot in the same same household one has ND over the window one doesn't over the window it's a, it's a kitchen setup all right here's the first one there's this window here you see how it's just super hot out there it's very hard to see what's going on out here this example here we actually put ND over the window. Look, you can see, you see the green, you see a tree, you see, I'm not sure where that is, it's kind of blown out, but you can actually see this tree and this tree is white and the sun is hitting it pretty hard, but it's not blowing up. I believe we had an ND9 over this window. You can see it looks like some tape here, possibly here, but we did the best we could. It looks way better to me. Look at them side by side. The one with the ND, it still looks bright. It still looks like a natural window. It's still gonna be a little bit more overexposed than our scene but it looks way better. Great job, grip team. Here's just some other quick examples. This was that same bar that we showed earlier. It's very bright out these windows and very blue, right? Very bright, but look right above it. That's almost too dark. For Seattle, it kind of makes sense. This was in Seattle. So Seattle, it would make sense for it to be not super bright out. This doesn't look like Seattle. It's way too bright. The reason we were able to get this exposure down on top here is we actually lowered the ISO of the camera in post to hit a perfect exposure, we were able to just mask it out. So you see how it's really light here? We actually didn't mask that part. So that's natural because this looked like this before we masked it. The reason we couldn't mask this is because there's way too much going on. Look at what the mask would have to do. It'd have to go around all these corners. It would have been a huge job, but we just kind of did it up here and I feel like it looks a little disjointed, but it looks so good that it's worth it. Just an example of a hotel shoot with uh, people talking. It was just a group of people talking and the windows are just way too blown out. You can't see any detail. It would have been really hard to get ND outside of these windows. What we could have done is try to put some nets up, a double, couple double nets maybe, but still second or third, maybe fourth story. So it would have been really difficult to get them up there in, in the short amount of time we had to set up. The problem with this is that your eyes go there. It's white. so. 
I'm immediately looking at that versus our subject. And that's why you wanna bring those windows down in exposure. Plus, it gives us more detail outside, helps us see the color. It just rounds out the image, makes it more vibrant, makes it more beautiful. Number five, not using an edge light. This is one of the biggest issues I've realized now when I was lighting nights. As a young DP, when you're shooting a night scene, you think I have to bring all the lights down. I don't want this to look lit. I don't want it to look like daytime, but you still gotta use an edge light because look what happens. We're coming in, it's nighttime. You see how there's really no detail on our female here? Here, there's, there's a light coming through the window, which is great, but here, it's just her sweater and then the wall. If we had a backlight here, we would be able to see the detail of her shirt. We'd be able to see the detail of her hair, which was awesome. It would have looked so good because it was so intricate. And we would have seen even an, um, <laughs> like crazy. We would have even seen a better outline of her head, nose, mouth, profile. It's just her, face and then a wall that's that's how you're able to see it but it would look so much better if we had an edge here just a bright um shiny it doesn't look like daytime it just looks like maybe there's a light on in the kitchen that's just edging her out of the background so you can see the detail of her a little bit better all right guys so here it's the same idea it's a night interior shot so we don't really have any lights on other than an ambient fill in the room and then obviously our computer but look at him you can't really tell the outline of him where is our person it's just a black shirt and then a, a blue wall so he's just gone and his hair nothing here is giving us any detail if we had just a light up here that we could play off the wall so it's not hitting the wall but just outlining at least this shoulder and then this part of his head and hair it would have looked way better, even his nose a little bit. A little bit of a three-quarter backlight with that light just kissing on the nose. It makes you feel a little alive. It edges our character out of the background instead of him just falling into it. Obviously, if you wanted to do that for a creative reason, you wanted him to fall off into the background, kind of feel like he's being absorbed by it, power to you. Don't put an edge light. But here, we really could have used one. And this is just another instance of you live and you learn. This is what this channel is all about. It's all about growing. It's all about gaining and sharing wisdom and growing into better DPs, better cinematographers, creating better images, more beautiful, more cinematic, more high quality. That's what this channel is all about. Thank you guys for joining me again. Ask a question down below, like, subscribe, and stay obsessed.